I know, man. Gorgeous day, middle of the summer. The Lambert River. Plenty of boats out. People do what they love to do. We're gonna get one. Morning guys, thanks for joining us. We're actually just talking about uh, salmon fishing rods. There's so many choices out there. Today we're only fishing four rods opposed to, to six. But for me, anytime I have a rod that's sitting perpendicular, which I always fish my bow rods perpendicular to my, my, the edge of my boat, and then my middle rods are at a 45, as you can see there, I always go with a little bit longer rod. When I say a little bit longer rod, I'm talking ten and a half. Ten and a half foot rod is as long as I go. On my back rods, I go nine and a half max. So nine and a half, ten and a half, ten and a half. Or you could go nine and a half, nine and a half, ten and a half to get yourself a spread, man. We're gonna get them today. We got some got some crazy stuff in the water. Braden, my kiddo, he's ready to go. He's jacked up right now. Tell he's he's ready to hammer on him. So don't let the kid fool you. He might be asleep under a blanket right now. One of those rods goes over. He's gonna be the first one to it. I guarantee it. So. Oh, we got a fish on here. Citrus Mitch Mistress. You really got. You have to let those suckers yank on him. Huh? <laughs> People always ask me, well, why we think we produce, produce the best products at VIP Outdoors. You have three fishing guides in a boat right now testing our products before we put them on the market. Okay? We've been doing this for a long, long time. That is not just a bite, that is a stuck fish. Citrus Mistress. Citrus Mistress. So for the win. Out of the crew, I seem to be the only one that likes Citrus Mistress. I think that's a great name, by the way. Uh, but everyone else keeps calling it Shitty Bear Spinner. It's, I don't know. Obviously, not going to get sponsored by Citrus Mistress. But I will say <laughs> we got that. The original Pendleton bow. We got Braden on. There we go. <laughs> oh, angry. Oh, yeah, I just figured it out. You want to go? You want to go? So, Kittle's got it on the rod holder, never took it out of the rod holder. So, really, that bite never stopped. Um, it's, it really is. You just got to leave them in there, guys. Something? Here, you can get Brody's whacker, buddy. Look at that. You get warm up? There you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here, I'll It's like we're buying brand new now. out right there, isn't it? That's what it. Little guy woke up and gave her a whirl. Yeah. That's awesome. That's the greatest thing, watching that big bee get, wake up. 3.30 to come out and catch that beautiful fish. Well, what, what were you doing when you caught that fish? Sleeping. You're sleeping? I caught it, but then I woke up and so said, what? Yeah. What was, the, what was the trick to landing that fish, son? Use some muscle from that hay baling. Yeah? From you, the hay baling? Use some muscle that you made from the hay baling? Yeah, that'll do it. You want to put that thing away? Look at that. Wow, 
that hook is so, is so far. Okay, perfect. Just wrapping it up here with Brian Jones from Takedown Guide Service. A lot of his contact info on here. Got a couple of nice springers. We're July 2nd on the Willamette River, downtown Portland. Easy fishing. Fishing Pro Trolls 360 Dodgers with our 3.5 VIP spinners. Awesome. I mean, what are you? Right downtown Portland. Yeah. 20 minutes from the time I left my house. The Willamette's one of those fisheries that we all get discouraged with, we all get frustrated with sometimes. But you gotta get out here and fish. Every day is so different. You get out here one day and you might not touch a fish. You might hear one or two fish caught. And then you come out the next day and you get four grabs the way we did in a matter of a few hours and it makes for a great day, right? So you just, that's fishing, that's the outdoors. You gotta get out and do it if you wanna be the person making the report instead of the person chasing the report. That's right. You chase the report, you're never gonna have a morning like this. You come out, make it a point to make the report, you're gonna be a person making the report, right? And you're gonna miss less days of catching when you're willing to get out and just do it. Just go do it. Take your right. kiddo, take your buddies, get out there and do it, man. So, anyway, thank you, Jones. Appreciate you, man, man. And we are gonna have what we call the perfect smoked salmon recipe for you. That's my favorite part. That is the oh, best part. Yeah. That's the best part. Put the bud lights, put the smoked salmon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Hey guys, just wrapped up Spring Chinook Fishing with Brian Jones and Jeff Burnett on the Willamette River. I'll tell you that Willamette River is a great little local fishery that we have here. Um, the Spring Chinook run, I wish we, we, all, we all wish it was a little bit better the sturgeon fishing on there it just makes for a great time but i want to share with you a recipe that i call perfect smoked salmon and perfect smoked salmon is perfect in a lot of different ways when you're talking about the texture the taste the size everything that goes into perf what i consider perfect smoked salmon i'm going to share with you right now so what i have is this fillet i've already filleted the the salmon we caught yesterday if you don't know how to fillet salmon we'll drop another a link on there for you and show you how we do it but what i've done is i've removed the rib cage i've removed any excess bones i still have pin bones in there i do want to get those removed you can probably remove those first okay get those guys out of there for video's sake and getting you guys uh, not having to look at my ugly mug, I'm gonna leave them in there for now. But get the pin bones out of there. Simply grab a piece or a plier and start yanking them out. If you notice, I always cut a little slit in the tail so I have something to hold on to. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna fillet the meat away from the skin. So cut down on the tail till you hit the skin. You wanna turn the knife and you wanna push down this direction and flex it that's why the importance of a good flexible knife in this application right here is a huge huge deal okay so push down nice and flat make sure you get every little piece and you can almost feel the the skin on the back side now if you get down there and you start having trouble and you're like oh this is too big of a piece of meat no big deal just cut it off right there you notice you have a nice piece of meat and you've got the skin still attached that's what we're looking for I'm gonna keep on working my way down there. Again, this is what I call perfect smoked salmon. And if it's perfect, you don't gotta worry about pulling it off the skin. Nice chunk of belly meat right there, that little scrap. You could do this one two different ways. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna coat this salt and pepper. I'm gonna throw it on the smoker while my other stuff is going and I'm gonna sit there and pick at it because that's gonna be my nice little guide cut, if you will. Now what I'm gonna do, take my knife and start cutting this into chunks. Nice little bite size, individual serving size. That way, when people come over and start grabbing at it, they could take a full piece of salmon without having to rip the rest of it apart. On the top part of the salmon, which I call the backstrap of the salmon, you're gonna see this line right here and if you notice it looks like a v that 
is its own section. It almost wants to separate from the body meat. All you do, run your knife right down there. That's going to be its own. You could tell that line's right there. Just run the knife right down the line. It's a natural guide. I'm going to cut those into their own nice sections. You want to make sure you don't cut too small of a chunk because after you brine it, dry brine it is what we're going to be doing and smoking it, it's going to shrink. So you don't want it to shrink so far that you don't get a taste of the, the salmon itself. And with these spring Chinook, you make you want to make sure you taste that salmon. So don't cut them too small. I'd say these are about three inches by inch and by the thickness of the fillet. Take this. Now that we've taken the top piece off, the belly piece off, I'm gonna cut that right in half. Take my tail. Probably got enough room for three slices here. Cut my chunks. And if there are any bones in there, it's not that big of a deal. You know, just take them out. But again, this perfect smoked salmon smokes perfect smoked salmon to me is you grab the piece, you chomp away at it, it's gone. Your hands aren't all messy. And it turned out absolutely phenomenal. Okay, get this guy. Now, the marinade. Very, very simple. Let me get rid of my cut glove. Now, in the barbecue, I just tossed aside all my scraps. So, like my collars, for example. My collar, my carcass. We have other videos on what to do with those, but for this specific, I want to make sure we focus on this recipe alone. All right, now I'm going to take salt, pour it in there, pour it in nice and heavy, and rotate that meat. Make sure you get it all coated up. One of the things that uh, I remember about this recipe is when we were at my buddy's lodge up in Alaska, Seals Family Lodge, we'd go out fishing in the morning, and by the time we came back, salmon that we had caught the evening before was smoked and ready by midday next day. I'm like thinking, how is, how is that smoked salmon already done? Well, what was happening, we were just salt brining it, in smaller chunks so the brine doesn't have to work all the way in there and then or not as far doesn't have to penetrate the meat as far and then they'd smoke it and it turned out absolutely phenomenal such a simple process you know but again it's quality of fish and every time I think about that I think about hanging out with my wife I think about hanging out with my buddies and their wives and just all the laughs we had and so this recipe gonna be great for the holiday but it that's what food does for me that, that that's why i think i like sharing it with you guys is it brings me back to a specific time a memory that i really really enjoyed so i hope it does the same for you and that's why i share them with you now if you notice i'm taking these i'm gonna put them all on a rack you could use like a baking rack you just want air underneath there to be able to circulate around the fish Again, all I did, guys, cut up this awesome spring chinook, salted it, and I'm going to put it in the fridge for about five, six hours. Fish that we just simply dry brined with salt on a rack so air could get all the way around it, and then I put it in the fridge overnight. When you have smaller chunks of fish like this, you really don't have to do it very long. Now what I did, again, these planks right here, these are alder planks opposed to cedar planks. And when I'm talking about smoking fish, a lot of times I use alder wood. If you don't have alder woods for the smoker, no big deal. Just get some of these alder planks, throw them in the bucket of water overnight, and they'll be nice and saturated. Then when you smoke this, there's gonna be a large amount of moisture that gets into that smoked salmon. Another reason I have multiple planks is because when I lay my fish out, I will do all my belly pieces on one plank. I'll do all my, what I call backstrap pieces on another plank. My thicker pieces on another. That way they all evenly cook. For example, this plank right here is gonna come off well before this plank here. Just because of the thickness of the, 
the filet. So get a couple of these smaller pieces, be nice little appetizers. And I want to show you, look at this. Look at the amount of moisture, additional liquid that that salt drew out of that fish. Let's see if I can lift this up. Okay. And what that's gonna do by doing that, it helps cure your fish. It helps that fish absorb that smoke and that flavor that we really want on it. So we have a very natural smoke fish flavor opposed to a watery one. This is the secret weapon right here. All this is is a four to one ratio of apple juice and soy sauce. Four apple juice to one soy sauce. Depending on how sweet or how salty you like it, you can mess with that ratio. But for me personally, it's a good one. I'm gonna continue to spray these just a light spray over the top of them before I put it in the smoker. Let's go ahead and head over to the smoker. These little pieces, I'm just gonna throw them on there just like that. Perfect, look at that. That is awesome. I have the smoker set at 200 right now. Don't mind the rib roast or the pork in there. And then you just lay your planks in there just like so. And again, these are all gonna smoke for different times because they're different thicknesses. I'll come out and I'll start checking them at about a half hour, 45 minutes. And we'll start pulling them off. Just like that. Guys, we're wrapping up our perfect smoked salmon. We've been smoking this for about an hour and 15 minutes at 225. Generally speaking, when I'm smoking stuff, I do it a little bit slower with, with the fish, but I had some pork butts in here. That's a different story, different time. Uh, so I just shortened down my amount of smoke time. Now, if you take a look at it, we did our different sizes. So here's my bellies. Here's what I call the back strap of the salmon. And then here's our lar larger chunks. And you can tell the larger chunks might not be done. See how that's kind of springy still? Still a little raw in the middle. But our bellies are going to be 100% done. What I do is I take my apple juice soy sauce mixture. I give them one last spray before I bring them off. And we have what I call our perfect smoked salmon. Always let these rest for about... Oh, 30 minutes before you serve them. And what's gonna happen is as soon as you do that, it'll come off the board nice and neat. Everyone has their own little individual piece and it just makes for a great party appetizer. Good to put in the fridge. I'll vacuum pack a bunch of these for hunting season, but it's just a great way to enjoy some of that salmon. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate you and I really look forward to seeing you on the next go around.